Hello, this is Cherk, and uh, today I'm going to talk about how to uh, render an interactive knowledge graph visualization that you could customize using Python in Jupyter Notebook. So uh, I assume that you have some experience with Jupyter Notebook, you're a Jupyter Notebook user, and also maybe you already heard about D3 in uh, JavaScript that actually is interactive graph visualization, okay? So let's, uh, before we dive into it, so those are my um, contact information. If you want to discuss further or ask questions afterwards, feel free to contact me. Uh, my Twitter inbox is open. Um, also, uh, yeah, I'm Shirk, and I'll talk a little bit about myself first. Uh, I love open source projects. I'm so lucky that I work through time for Terminus DB, which is an open source graph database that do revision control. Um, so if you're interested, again, talk to me. I'm happy to talk about that. Uh, I also organize a lot of events. Uh, this year is a little bit interesting and um, so we have Pi Data Global in November that you can attend online and also uh, we would have an online conference that's called Pajamas in December. Uh, also I stream on Twitch so if you're interested in um, maybe you know watching me doing some Python or talk about Python uh, with my friend then uh, please follow me on uh, Twitch. So um, our first question is that so many Jupyter users, they are like, they're Python listers. They actually mainly use Jupyter Notebook for Python. So can you actually use JavaScript in Jupyter Notebook? Because we want to use D3, right? D3 is written in JavaScript. And the answer is yes, because Jupyter Notebook is a web application. So you may notice that when you run Jupyter Notebook, your browser will pop up and actually Jupyter Notebook is run there. So for browsers, it loves JavaScript. It could render JavaScript with no problem because the front end of Jupyter Notebook itself is in JavaScript. <laughs> um, of course, it got the back end is you know this built with Tornado, but you know the front end part of Jupyter Notebook actually is on JavaScript. So um, yeah, and also uh, by the sign that uh, JavaScript let us run a cell, uh, you know render cell as JavaScript by using the JavaScript magic. So uh, you may have seen this magic before that, you know, percent percent time it or, um, you know, Maplelib, inline, all these are magic that's provided by uh, Jupyter Notebook. So it's like a special command that tell Jupyter Notebook, OK, this cell is actually written in JavaScript. I want it to be rendered in JavaScript and Jupyter Notebook will happily do that. So that's great. <laughs> Good news for us. Um, another thing is that uh, can we pull in some external script, just like, you know, Python, we can import script. Can I pull in an external script for JavaScript? Because we don't want to write everything in the cell. It, you know, we need some library that would make things complicated if we can put it in. So the answer is yes, you can put it in. So that's great. We just need to use require. You will see all of this in action in just a few seconds. So, um, Another thing that we found like very helpful is this tutorial by uh, Stefan. Uh, so this is actually uh, how to uh, do a customized uh, D3 uh, visualization in Jupyter Notebook. So uh, I will show you a little bit of this tutorial. And uh, so this is really great because it basically do what we want to do. Uh, it used the JavaScript magic at the beginning here that uh, run the JavaScript magic and, and run required. And afterwards, you know, uh, it could, you know, uh, you could customize it. It's, uh, it's using D3 to draw some circles. Uh, our use case is a little bit different. Uh, first of all, we will have a few more script uh, other than D3 that we have to pull in. Uh, the other thing is that we want to wrap that, that uh, our JavaScript actually in a Python module. So the users, can actually do everything without seeing any JavaScript. So let's see how we do it. Um, so first of all, this is the version one. This is the experiment. Uh, this is highly ex uh, similar to the tutorial that we just see. Uh, we pull in the script using JavaScript magic. And um, so this is D3 script that we pull in. We also have a few other scripts that right now is just hosting on my server, but uh, eventually we will publish it properly uh, online. And so uh, we also have this script, which basically render the graph. And uh, you see that required this line here is like import this three modules. So uh, this is like importing Python. 
So uh, we could use these uh, objects uh, from this group. Uh, there's some debugging thing here, but uh, so this is the data that we got back from the backend. So if a user do a query uh, from to the graph database, they would get a, a result graph back. So this is represented in a uh, JSON format. You can see all these objects here that got different properties, so they are actually related to each other in some way. Um, so this is the result graph that we got back. And here is the uh, customization bit here. So uh, in this bit, you can see that we could do some customization here by changing you know, the height and the width of the graph. So, but all this is in JavaScript right now. So eventually we want to use a Python interface to let the user to, um, to modify this script, okay? Um, so how can we do that? How can we change like, cause this is all these cells are now in JavaScript. So this is not, nothing here is in Python. So what should we do? So I will show you the first thing that we do is to uh, from ipython.display uh, import display and javascript okay so uh, these two objects provided by ipython uh, basically first uh, javascript lets you uh, render you know just declare a script as a javascript so uh, you can put in a string uh, here and then actually it would uh, change uh, so it would provide a javascript object okay um and then if you put that in display so uh display is like print of uh, ipython but instead of printing just you know some word uh, or strings then uh, it could actually uh display an object uh, as what you told it to render so if it's a javascript object then it could render the, the script as a javascript so let's let's see how it works and it will be more clear uh, when i've done it so what we we'll do is that we want to have the JavaScript as the input for display. So what we have in the JavaScript will be our script. So this is our script. Okay. So now it becomes a script. It becomes just purely string. And then let me close it properly. So we have, so we have a, st a string, which is our JavaScript. And it's wrapped in the JavaScript. So it becomes an object that basically tells IPython this is a JavaScript. And then we tell IPython to display it, to render the script, okay? So we can do the, exactly the same thing for our other script here. So instead of the magic, we use this. Um, so uh, it should give us the same result. So here, so you can see that our magic actually rendered the graph here. Okay, I forgot to show you earlier. So um, right now this one should uh, work the same. So if I restart and run all, so... Um, Yep, so it gives me the same thing. It gives me the same graph because nothing changed. I just changed the method how uh, we rendered the JavaScript, how we tell IPython to render the JavaScript. Uh, instead of using the magic, we use this method, okay? So why do I do this? Uh, the advantage of doing this is that I can actually pull out this result uh, because we want this result to be dynamic. So every time when we get a result back from the database, it will be different. So instead of copy and pasting it every time, we can just put it Pull it out okay so now it become a dictionary uh, luckily for this thing actually uh, this doesn't need a special sterilization into a json string but of course you can use json dom to do it uh, because sometimes the result coming back is not uh, sterilized properly uh, but right now it's fine so we would make this a variable so uh, we would use the string formatting in python to do that okay so this will be the data so if we, if I run everything again, it should work the same. So uh, kernel restart and run all, and here, yeah, everything's just worked. But this time, uh, we could actually use our Python clients to uh, get the query result back instead. Um, so how much time do I have? Okay, I can still show you a few more things. Um, another thing is that uh, we want to have uh, this configuration flexible. So what we can do is that because we will have lots of different configuration, you can add some more here. Uh, so for example, if you want to change the edges of it, so you can change it to uh, to I uh, just one uh, person and oops, so it should be quotation mark uh, person and a name. Okay, so I would put it like this in JavaScript. Okay, so if I uh, render this again, so you see the graph has changed. It's only the person and the name. So, uh, but we want this to be hidden from the user, right? So uh, this thing, we want this configuration 
to actually be dynamic. So uh, we could change a configuration in Python. So I will show you the final result of how it would become. Okay. So um, so this is a notebook. So this is actually a notebook that we built uh, earlier this year to uh, show um, you know how to use the database uh, in a Jupyter notebook. So you can see that at the beginning we just like need to connect to the database. Uh, I don't have time to show you like how this terminus db client work, but basically it's just an API talking to the the, the data uh, the database backend. So uh, you see that we have these workflow views. So this is our script that basically lets you do all this uh, customization here. So you see that now we can customize the graph. By um by some Python code, so all these are Python code. So actually, by creating this Walker View Python object, uh, we actually create all this stuff at the back. So this is how where that come, came from. So you see that. Uh, so all these are just checking that whether it's rendered in a Jupyter notebook. So um, and afterwards, you see the fam yeah, it's very familiar, right? So we have this script. So when you create object. Uh, we will render the uh, the JavaScript to uh, import the, the scripts, and when you do all these like different methods, that actually will change the configuration, which actually is just as adding some different configurations in the JavaScript. So when you render the show here, and actually it will just render that script that we had before, but uh, we would uh, have some you know this would be the configurations that we import. So we have the result that is uh, pulled in as an input and also the configuration as an input. So it would change every time. So uh, yeah, I think that's it. That's a quick demonstration of how we build a module to do a custom uh, knowledge graph visualization. I hope you like it and feel free to talk to me afterwards. And thank you so much for listening.